Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video I'm going to be talking about the new Beofang DM32 UV radio. Uh, this is not going to be the review. I've had a bunch of people asking me about a review, especially after I did the uh, the video profiling the new radio pouch that Spectre Gear is manufacturing for this radio. And by the way, this is that missing belt-mounted version that uh, didn't appear in the video. Um, and if you're interested in that radio pouch, by the way, SpectreGear.com, and I'll leave a link in the description where to find it. But, back to this. As soon as I put that out, it revealed the fact that I had a DM32 UV in my possession. And people started asking questions right away. And one of those questions was, when are you going to do a review? And the problem with doing the review is, this is a fairly complex and feature-rich radio. Uh, there's a lot of setup that goes into this radio to be able to test all of the features and capabilities of the radio. So it was pretty time-consuming just setting the thing up to do the review. So I was working on it in my part-time, and I started out programming the GMRS frequencies in, and the repeaters, and everything worked just fine. Then I put in all the, the simplex channels, and then simplex DMR, and then some sneaky encryption stuff. And I, I, was, I was fiddling around with it and dialing it in, and really ex having an experience I hadn't had in a good long time. And that was a fun, enjoyable experience programming a radio. Um, this, this, one's, this one's interesting. And not challenging, it, it wasn't problematic, um, it's just a lot of work and getting everything set up, there's a lot you can do with this radio. And I was really genuinely happy with this thing. Didn't like the fact that there's no weather protection on it, but I'll talk more about that later. But everything was going fine, and then I just ran smack dab into a frickin' brick wall with this thing, and I encountered... It suddenly stopped working um, in, in a particular way. Um, and in a in a kind of a silly way in that it's one of those things that when it comes up you can't understand the problem you can't understand why is this thing not working there's no way to affect it. I, it it was very very frustrating it's just everything is working just fine except for this and what it had to do with was i was programming in amateur radio service repeaters and i was having trouble um with the radio suddenly not applying offsets and it worked just fine on GMRS, but I got to this one chunk of channels, and for whatever reason, it would not apply the offset, and it was really, really frustrating. Now, again, I had heard some people mentioning that this radio had some problems and was frustrating and difficult in programming analog on the analog side, but they weren't identifying exactly what the problem was. So I don't know if I'm having the same problem they had, but I do know that other people are having the same problem. So let me go ahead and turn off the lights so I can illustrate to you the problem that I had and what I'm talking about. And I'm turning off the lights because one thing everyone can agree with or agree on with this radio is that the display is all but impossible to see under any kind of bright light. And the lights required for this camera wash everything out to the point you won't be able to see what I'm talking about. But with the lights turned off, I think we can get that accomplished. So let's uh, look to area A up at the top here, and you'll see TCRC G1, which is a GMRS repeater. Below that you see a frequency, and that's 462.700. That is the receive frequency for this repeater. Now when I key down, what's going to happen on this radio is that frequency readout is going to change to 467.700 because as we know, repeaters require a transmit and uh, receive or receive and transmit frequencies and that there is an offset between the two frequencies. In the case of UHF, it's going to be 5 megahertz. And in the case of GMRS, it's going to be a plus option. So when I key down, that'll change from 462.700 to 467.700. So let's key down and see what happens. Okay, you'll note there that it changed to 467.700. It could chunk the repeater. Everything's working fine and splendid. Now, when we go down to amateur radio service, at the bottom here in area B, we see TCRC1. And that is a receive frequency of 146.880. That means this is a VHF, amateur radio service re repeater. And it's going to require an offset of 0.6 megahertz. And that's going to be a minus 0.6. So when I key down on transmit, it should change from 146.880 to 
280 if everything is working correctly. But when I key down, it stays on 146.880. And note also, in area A at the top, we see a plus sign. That means it's a plus for the offset. But here it's showing kind of a weird arrow. Now more on that in a minute. But when I switch to TCRC2, still have that weird arrow. I've got 440.400. This is UHF, so it's going to require a 5 megahertz offset, and it's going to be to the plus. So it'll be plus 5. And so when I key down to transmit, it should change to 445.400 from 440.400. So when I transmit, nothing. Stays on receive. So I'm, I'm sitting there wondering, okay, well, what the hell's going on? So the first thing I do is I check my settings. So you can do that from the front panel pretty easily. Just press the menu button, arrow down to settings, and... What we're going to do is go to channel set, press that again, see what our receive frequency is, and that's 146.880. That is correct. So let's check our transmit frequency, 146.280. That is correct. So everything's fine there. But you say, well, you didn't put your plus or minus arrow in, your shift direction is what that's called, and you didn't put in the offset amount. Well, this radio doesn't work on that principle. Uh, I do know other Beofang radios do. You put in either a plus or a minus and either a 0.6 for VHF or a, a 5 megahertz for UHF, and you're good to go. This radio doesn't work like that, and there is no option for setting that up. It's just not there. Uh, and the same applies to the CPS. You put in the receive frequency and the full transmit frequency, and that's how your offset is established. So everything seems, everything's programmed fine. Uh, there should be no reason why it's not working correctly. I verified the settings in the CPS, and everything's just fine. I could not find any reason why this thing wasn't working correctly. Now, the other inexplicable thing was, because, so... Here's sort of where I was at when this when this popped up. When when suddenly the radio stopped working, I was thinking, well, I either have a defective radio or a radio with a defect. And that's an important distinction, because if it's just a defective radio, I can get another one, replace this one, and we're good to go. So the first thing I want to do is determine, have other people had this problem? Or, because sometimes, and I'm sure all of you have been at, in this position at some point or another, where you're researching a problem and you can't find anybody with the same problem that you're having. Oftentimes it's either something very simple that you overlooked or it's something is broken on, on the product that you have that's causing this aberrant behavior. But when I researched this, I found other people having the exact same problem and a lot of people having the exact same problem. Now, some people didn't know the problem that they had. They just said, it just freaking doesn't work, and they were kicking it to the curb and moving on to something else, which is kind of sad because this is a really good radio despite this one little problem, okay? So as soon as I determined other people were having a problem, I go, okay, then let's look for a solution because it's probably not a broken radio. It's a radio with a broken or radio with a problem uh, programmed into it. So I started looking around and I did find a solution for this and a fairly, fairly simple solution. And here's what's going on. So there's a feature within the radio called talk around. And when talk around is, when talk around is enabled, instead of your usual offset, direction, either plus or minus, what you're going to get is a little arrow. So what talk around is, talk around when you apply it to a, a repeater channel, what it does is it forces transmit on the receive frequency. So it turns the repeater channel into a simplex channel. Now, why you would want to do that, there's there's a number of, a number of reasons for that. Um, and I won't really get into those here, but it's a fairly obscure need kind of feature that not a lot of people use but for whatever reason this radio is hard programmed within certain channel blocks within the radio to apply this feature no matter what you put on there it it automatically applies this unless you force it to not apply that feature and and that is the talk around feature and how i know that this is related to to blocks of channels is this kind of comes and goes because I heard other people 
surmising that this was related to frequency ranges that above a certain frequency range for instance everything's fine on 462 uh, and 467 but when you're down in VHF um, 146 zero, for instance um, that it applies this and that's not the case I think it's certain chunks of channels where for whatever reason the radio has been hard programmed so and this is that means this is a firmware issue and not a cps issue so at some point when they because this radio comes with a bunch of stuff programmed onto it sometimes and i've encountered this particularly with yesu radios and chirp um sometimes there'll there'll be stuff that chirp never fully overwrites it, despite the fact that you may have erased the channel there's some stuff that's still on that channel slot maybe channel slot 244 for all you know and in this case this by the way is channel slot 244 that this is on right now um, but on another channel everything's fine it's a blank channel slot and how i know that this is related to channel slots is so we've got 146880 won't do it and it does this all the way through so although you're seeing channel six here for instance uh, channel six let me check something hang on move some i've got the cps open here and yeah channel six is actually memory slot 249 but it's channel six within this zone okay so there's 250 there's 251 252 253 even though it's channel 10 and then we get to channel 12 which is i think it's channel slot 255 so all of a sudden we get our 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 minus sign is back and that's 146.970 and when a key down the offset gets applied everything's working fine there everything works fine there and i can even kerchunk the repeater so everything's great there so it's not related to the frequency i think it's related to certain chunks of of channels that are corrupted within the firmware now this is something that can be fixed at some point via firmware the latest firmware i can report does not fix this um, the person that that gave me the solution to this problem had tried that and and reported that despite the fact he had the most recent firmware on the radio and and this should be the most recent firmware by the way i've only had this radio for like three weeks um but yeah it's it's uh it's not been corrected but can be corrected until then though if you encounter this problem where your radio will not execute the offset and you've got that weird little arrow at the top there's a very, very, very simple solution that will give you an instantaneous fix. Once the fix is applied, you can move on and everything will work just fine. So at this point, what I want to do is break from here and I'm going to go to the actual computer view, the CPS view. And I'll show you how to find within the CPS um, view the means to override this uh, talk around feature and get your repeater frequency or repeater channel to work properly so at this point let's go ahead and switch to that view and i'll show you what um, how to execute that fix so hang on just a second i'll be right back okay i have the dm32 uv cps open and let's go ahead and uh, we're in the channel view right at the moment so let's go ahead and double click on tcrc1 there's the settings as we looked at earlier actually on the radio we've got our receive frequency of 146.880 our transmit frequency of 146.280 everything like I said is uh, exactly as it should be set but here's what you want to do to fix the problem right here under this checkbox for forbid talk around when you click that it's going to shut off and forbid that talk around feature that's causing the problem with the repeater offset and all you need to do is simply check that box and you are good to go and you can uh, elect if you want to proceed through and in this case I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the remainder of those repeater frequencies but just go in there and as I mentioned just click forbid talk around and it will eliminate the problem altogether. So let's go ahead and switch back to the radio view and see if what we've done here has any effect.
Okay, we're back and looking at the radio view, and already I can see that there has been a positive change, or in this case a negative change, because I now see a negative offset indicator above the channel name instead of that little arrow. Uh, so that's already an encouraging sign that um, what we did on the CPS side of things actually might have had some effect. So let's go ahead and key down and see what happens. Uh, as a reminder before, the problem of course was that it wasn't applying the offset and when I would key down instead of switching from 146.880 to 146.280, it was just staying at 146.880. So let's key down and see what happens now on TCRC1. Okay, you'll notice that it changed to 146.280, and I was able to hit and kerchunk the repeater. So let's do that one more time. And everything's working just fine now. Uh, TCRC2 is not going to work because that repeater is actually down right now. Yeah, I'm getting nothing there. Uh, but if I go up to maybe, let's try TCRC5. Everything working just fine now. So, there's a fairly simple solution to a frustrating problem. If you're having difficulty with your uh, DMUV or DM32UV, sorry about that, um, not applying the offset, that's all you have to do is just simply go in there. Whether you do it for just the repeater channels that are afflicted by that problem, because remember my theory at least is that this is a, a corruption of a chunk of channels within the firmware, or rather a chunk of memory slots within the firmware. In this case, it's in the 240 to 255 range um, as far as memory slots, but this may occur elsewhere. Uh, so what I've gotten in the habit of doing is just simply, you know, hitting that forbid talk around feature on every repeater that I that I apply now. I don't use that feature anyway, so I, I really haven't lost anything in doing so. And that assures that this isn't going to pop up later and become an issue for me. Uh, so there, like I said, it's a fairly simple workaround to this problem. Hopefully they fix it eventually in firmware. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a little surprised that uh, Baofeng let this thing out into the wild without uh, without realizing that they had that problem. But, you know, hey, stuff happens, right? Um, but if, like I said, if, you're, if you've been frustrated with the analog programming of repeaters and that's been your problem, well, there's your solution. So without... Uh, Without anything else, then, I'll go ahead and bring it to a close at this point. And uh, just as a reminder, if you are, uh, let me switch on a, a light here. If you uh, are looking for a pouch for your Baofeng DM32UV, uh, we do have the Molly and the belt-mounted versions of pretty nice little pouch for that. And there's a separate video showing the uh, the features and details of that pouch available elsewhere. But uh, if you're interested in that, please visit SpectreGear.com and you'll find not only that, but a bunch of other radio pouches for amateur radio uh, HTs out there, as well as um, slings, magazine pouches, all, uh, all kinds of other cool tactical stuff. So I thank you for watching or listening. This is Scott, Kilo CR6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.